Web3 Gaming has a long way to go before it becomes mainstream, according to a survey by Coda Labs, which shows that only 3% of gamers own an NFT and generally don't have positive feelings about crypto. Joining us now is Michael Wagner, CEO of Solana-based NFT game Star Atlas. Hello there, Michael. Thanks for joining us. So just want to go over some of the uh, details of this survey. So 89% of gamers who play at least twice a month are aware of Bitcoin and 51% are aware of NFTs but have largely negative feelings about them. Gamers rank their feelings toward crypto at 4.5 out of 10 and NFTs at 4.3 out of 10. Only 52% of gamers are familiar with any sort of Web3 gaming term, while only 12% of gamers have tried playing a crypto game. So just off the bat, you know, want to get your reaction to some of the results of this survey. Well, good morning and thank you for having me on. But, you know, as in any uh, statistical analysis, the sample set obviously has, has significance in, uh, in the outcome. What I would agree with is that there is a fairly high degree of skepticism that exists in the traditional gamer community uh, related to NFTs and blockchain-based gaming and things like play to earn. Um, we do believe uh, fervently that over time, as we are able to educate the mainstream consumer on, you know, what the potential of these new open economies is and uh, creator-based ecosystems, the metaverse itself more broadly, as well as delivering higher quality gaming products to the world, you know, so-called AAA gaming products like we're developing at Automata and within Star Atlas, that we will be able to attract and incentivize those uh, mainstream users into this ecosystem. Yeah, here's the silver lining of that survey, though. The, the gamers that eventually try a Web3 game tend to like it with uh, favorability ratings hitting about 7.1 out of 10. Yet hundreds of millions of dollars have been raised and spent on Web3 gaming. So I guess how do you get gamers who are used to the status quo over that learning hump? You know, again, it really is what is the incentive mechanism? And it's a transition from these financial incentives that are, I guess I would say, conventional across crypto today. You know, the whole idea of play to earn, spend time in a video game and you're able to make money in doing so and, and by earning cryptocurrency along the way. And while I think that is an enormous opportunity set, uh, particularly for some of the most disparaged communities and populations around the world, uh, ultimately what we need to get to is an entertainment-based experience. So creating fun games that people can immerse themselves in, uh, achieve that sense of escapism that we really target when playing video games. That's ultimately why people play games. So getting to that point is going to motivate the mainstream consumer to uh, uh, learn the technology that's necessary to, to be able to enter into these games and then also creating a more seamless and simplified user onboarding process. Yeah, meanwhile, you have some news on that path toward mass adoption. You're partnering up with Epic Games and have a release demo out. Let us uh, know a bit about that. Right. This was a significant milestone for us as a company, and this came on the tail of a series of product launch events that we hosted starting back in uh, April of this year with another one in July, and, and then this uh, most recent one was in September, uh, so September 29th. Uh, the the highlight of that event is the demo that's on screen here, and this is what we call the showroom. Um, the primary purpose of this is to simply demonstrate the quality and caliber of development that we produce here uh, at Automata, the studio behind Star Atlas. Epic, uh, fortunately for us, is uh, quite supportive of the concept of Web3 Gaming, and we in particular utilize multiple products that they produce. Uh, this this uh, demo that you're looking at is produced in Unreal Engine 5, and that enables us to deliver the highest quality cinematic and immersive graphics that are really possible today. So we work with Epic using Unreal Engine 5, and uh, subsequently created a, a strong relationship with them to launch through the Epic Game Store platform. And that enables distribution to some 200 million users of which, you know, they have something like 35 million daily active users across that platform. So this is very much a first step. This is still a closed pre-alpha product. Um, however, it's a, it's a fantastic first step in the direction mm -hmm. of mainstream adoption. So where, where are your users based mostly? I, I, like if you had to break down geographically, where, where are you finding, uh, where, where's your popularity? 
It's a great question. We really do have a global audience. Uh, some of our largest user bases exist in Brazil, in Turkey, in the Middle East, and in Southeast Asia. Uh, we also have quite a significant cohort of users within the United States as well at this time, but it is truly a distributed and global audience. And then in terms of the, uh, in terms of the ones that are actually like, uh, you know, doing a lot of the commerce part of it, at least, I, uh, where are they found? In terms of where, where is the majority of the purchasing? Where does that take place? Yeah. Purchasing and selling, yeah. So a lot of those same regions um, that, that I just outlined, those are the same users that are trading on our marketplace. Mm -hmm. And how is it going during a bear market? Well, of course, we're impacted uh, by the crypto market cycle simply because we have exposure to volatile digital assets. Uh, we do have two digital currencies that uh, our, op our ecosystem operates upon, one of those being a governance token and the other one being the in-game currency, uh, which is called Atlas. And um, we as an entity accept our own in-game currency as a form of payment, a method of driving utility to that token. Um, so in a way, we, we certainly are impacted by that, but I think what the uh, metrics would show as well is that NFT trading volume in general has declined substantially. The last number I saw was something like down 97% against the uh, all-time highs earlier this year. So. Um, yeah. You know, the demand from a speculative standpoint is certainly lower now, but we are perfectly comfortable with that because the demand that we experience as a company is more from the user that is truly captivated about the potential of the product that we're building. And you decide to build on Solana. So I wonder, you know, is are the Solana network outages having in any impact on you? The most recent one was for several hours over the weekend. Is that a concern? It's not a concern whatsoever. Um, these are also some uh, some numbers that we look at on a regular basis. And I just saw uh, a report earlier this week that demonstrated that Solana is producing something like 34 times the quantity of transactions on a daily basis that a network like Ethereum is producing. So some 34 million transactions per day, whereas Ethereum is still at 1 million transactions per day. Collectively across all of the layer ones, Solana still exceeds the total transaction volume on all of those networks. So what we're seeing at Solana is massive growth in the user base and massive growth in innovation. And for a company like ours, which is intended to be fully decentralized and distributed and integrative and interoperable with other projects within the blockchain ecosystem, it is fantastic to see all of this innovation going on because all of these other companies and projects that are launching, we are able in some way to introduce to our users or integrate directly into our gaming experience. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's truly beneficial for us. Of course, you know, downtime is not good, but we understand that Solana is still in mainnet beta. It will take some time to get to full mainnet launch, and we're comfortable developing alongside them during this process.